Hey man, I got a sweet haul from the flea market. I thought maybe you could use some of this stuff for your nerd painting. Okay, I'll bite. What'd you find? Oh, let's see here. A uh, sprue cutter. Nope, that is not what those are at all. All-purpose glue and gap filler. Also no. Primer. Oh no, I didn't get these for you. These are for me. How did you survive to adulthood? I punch all those other babies so I was the only one left. Hey there, friends. You know, there are so many stinking products out there for us as miniature painters, and there's more that are coming out each and every single day. But the thing is, is there's so many other things out there in the hobby that weren't intended for us as miniature painters, but really are some of the perfect things to use in a given situation. So today we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna do this off the cuff, no script, and we're just gonna run through some of my favorite tools for miniature painting that weren't intended for us. Okay, right off the bat. These things, model holders that you can purchase by companies. There's a bunch of different ones on the market these days. I don't use them. Nope, definitely not. Instead, what I do is I go to the hardware store and I buy a dowel, okay? You take these dowels and you can even have them cut it down for you if you don't have a saw at home, but I just take them home and cut them in about these two and a half inch lengths. And then I have as many model holders as I need. Also, you can go and go from like a craft store and these are just wooden candlestick holders that I flip them upside down and there we go. I've got a nice little hobby holder there as well. But then it comes to how we stick the miniatures on. Now, a lot of times people say, well, you just use the, the sticky tack or blue tack or something like that. And I don't like using that. It either seems like it's too sticky and it gets totally attached to the model or it's not sticky enough. And if you've got a heavy model or a top heavy model, when you're moving it around in all angles, it's just not working. So what I use, one of my favorite products to use in all of miniature painting is 3M double-sided foam tape. This stuff is magic. Now I've tried other off brands, some cheap brands you can get at the hardware store and oftentimes they're so incredibly strong they don't work right how I like it. This stuff is the perfect amount of tackiness. You could stick a model by its single foot on one of these pieces of tape and it would hold through the whole paint job. And when it comes to actually taking the model off at the end, you just slide your knife underneath it and pop it off, simple as that and it's reusable. As long as you don't cover that whole thing with primer, I've done four, five, six, seven models on the same piece of tape. It really is a cheap and effective way to get all the hobby holders you will ever need. Today's video is brought to us by Shield Wolf Miniatures. The folks over at Shield Wolf create such a wide variety of classic yet interesting models, everything from fantasy to sci-fi to terrain to bases to busts and more. They were kind enough to send me over a couple of models from their upcoming Kickstarter, Imperium Desertum and Imperium Immortalis. Whew, that's not easy to say. And I gotta say, they cleaned up super crisp and super clean and the details were super, super nice and I used all the tools that you're seeing today in the video to do so. The size and quality of these models make me think they would be a great fit for proxies in a variety of games, and I can definitely see using these guys as cultists or guardsmen. Another nice thing about the Kickstarter is the option to purchase either the physical models or the digital files so you can 3D print however many you may need. So check out Shield Wolf Miniatures website, link below, as well as a link to their new Kickstarter Thank you, Shield Wolves, for supporting the channel. Okay, let's get back to the video. One other thing I like to get are just paint stir sticks you get from the hardware store or wherever you buy your paint for your house. We'll typically give you these for free or I just lean over the counter and steal them, but whatever. What I do with these is I just put a bunch of different rows of that tape on there and so I can batch prime really quickly. I throw a whole bunch of models on these stir sticks on the tape run them outside with my rattle can and I can spray them all down really fast. Next thing, let me just get it. 
is a hair dryer or a heat gun. I use a heat gun because I thought I was going to be the cool guy that came up with this idea to use a heat gun over an air dryer. Now, why would you use this in miniature painting? Pretty simply, you just want to speed up the drying time sometimes of your painting. If you're working in very thin glazes or you're working with inks or you've got something that takes a while to dry like a wash or a contrast, you can just hit it with your air dryer fast and you get it dry quick so you can keep moving. Sometimes it's not necessary, but I often find it's fun to have one by my side. If I use this thing, my portable heat gun, what I really recommend is if you go this route, get one with an adjustable temperature gauge. This one just has a dial I can turn on the side. I usually keep it on its lowest setting, but if I really want to get something dried fast, something like an oil paint or an enamel paint, it may take a little bit longer, and that heat activation will increase that drying time for those products. There we go. Oh, and for all these things that I mentioned today, if I can find a link to them, um, which I should be able to do, I'm gonna post it in the video description below. So you can go out and purchase these if they appeal to you. Let's talk about model prep and cleanup. Now these first tools are gonna be very familiar to you probably, and those are just X-Acto blades. X-Acto blades have a lot of uses in our hobby, but I always keep two. I keep one that's nice and sharp, and I keep the other that is so stinking dull, I couldn't cut myself if I tried. The reason why I always keep a dull blade is the blade that is dull is the best one for cleaning up mold lines and little imperfections on our model without worrying about gouging into the plastic and causing unnecessary damage. Because I can't cut into the model too much with this dull blade, it works great for cleaning up and getting in those hard to reach areas. Like the stupid knuckles, wasn't it great when they put a mold line right over the stinking knuckle? These next ones are a godsend. These are something that I use on every single mini that I prep. And these are flexible sanding sticks. So they come with sandpaper on each side and they're kind of foam and flexy so they can move to whatever shape you need to and conform to the model. One side's a little bit rougher and the other side's a little bit smoother of sandpaper grit. And I find these are awesome for speeding through a whole bunch of models quick and getting 90% of the cleanup done. And then I just go back in with either my X-Acto blade or my last thing here, which is high grit sandpaper. Now, high grit sandpaper is perfect for getting into the hard to reach areas or when you really are trying to do try hard and get a perfectly smooth helmet on that Space Marine. I like to use a 600 to 800 for most of my work. If I want to get something super smooth or it's on a large flat surface and I can't have any kind of a sign of that line, I'll go up to a 1200 or a 1500 grit as well. Cheap, grab them at the hardware store and one packet of this will probably last you most of your hobby and career. Okay, next, let's talk about bottles. I have all sorts of bottles in my painting area. These ones right here are Tattoo Artist water bottles. If you've ever gotten inked up, these would look familiar to you. You can get these cheap for a three, five, or eight pack or whatever. Um, I like to put stuff like my airbrush cleaner and my water in those. I have smaller bottles with alcohol and water as well. Um, these are great for doing a quick refill of your uh, wet palette. Um, sometimes our wet palette gets our paper to start to curl up and a way to prevent that is to make sure that you're adding more water to that palette throughout your painting session or after a day or so before you stop for the evening. It's great to get more water in there so your paper doesn't curl up. Oh, and I always keep one of these little duders with my airbrush thinner in it and this is always by my airbrush station so I can just squirt in a couple drops of thinner every time I'm using my airbrush. Super fast for that. And for the big water one with the uh, tattoo bottle, I like to have this right next to my airbrush when I'm gonna clean it out at the end of the session. I squirt it in there, I gurgle it, and then I throw out that water. These are perfect for getting down in there and flushing out that water in my airbrush. All right, next thing. We're gonna talk about transferring paint. And I know maybe you just say the Games Workshop bottles are fine the way they are and I'll grab the paint out of them. At one point I was trying to be really proactive and I transferred 
all of my GW paint into these little bottles. You can buy in bulk like 200 pack of these little bottles for cheap um, and those are great. But the key that I found for actually making this transfer work really slick and pretty painless is buying a big pack of these tiny funnels. Now with just this tiny funnel, the new bottles and a little bit of blue tack to make sure they stick together, I can transfer a whole bunch of bottles in a very quick period of time. I can get one going, get it to start to go through the funnel and move on to the next and the next and the next. And at the end, I take all my dirty funnels, I throw them in some dish soap and water in a little bucket and I can get those all ready to be cleaned and used again. <laughs> make sure that I throw in one of these little agitators in each of my new bottles as well to make sure that I can mix them up very simply. I got these from Monument Hobbies. They are my favorite new little agitators. They're not going to rust. They're pretty cheap and I've got a link to those below as well as a coupon code for 10% off anything from their site. So you can check those out as well. And speaking of agitation, I did invest in a Vortex mixer about six months ago. And I've got to say, it completely changes how I view certain paints. Certain paints are so hard to mix up, and I often found that my consistency in those paints wasn't what I was expecting. Either too thick or too runny or inconsistent. This Vortex mixer is great to ensure that I get a smooth, consistent paint out of the bottle every single time. So we're all familiar with super glue and plastic cement to build our models, but this little bad boy right here is called Instaset. He is a super glue accelerator. Anything that you touch with super glue in this thing will be set 100% in a second, which is awesome. I don't want to have to hold my model in this exact position to make sure the super glue sets and doesn't start to bend before it's in place. This thing has a little bit of a squirt bottle on top. Do not use the squirt bottle. A great miniature painter and friend of mine, Anthony Rodriguez, told me a couple years ago that what you do is you unscrew the top and in there you have the bottom of this little tube. You just touch this to your part of the model and make sure that just a drop of the accelerator hits there. Put the super glue on the other part that you're going to glue together, combine them, and there you go. Instant glue 100% of the time. Next, let's go over a couple other fun tools. Here we have what are called wax carver tools. They're basically, whoa, that one was out of there. They're basically dental tools, um, but they're not that high of quality to actually use in your mouth, which is fine, they're great for us. Whenever you're doing any kind of sculpting, any kind of green stuff work, trying to pick up a little piece of something and attach it, you can just poke it with these. I use these all the time. A pack of these are pretty cheap as well. Next, let's talk miniature files. Okay, you can get a small set of files like this at most hardware stores um, pretty easily and pretty cheaply. These are great for cleaning up kind of big sections of the model that you want to get firmly and quickly sanded away. They're nice and rigid and they make sure that everything gets off really quickly. I like these when I'm cleaning up burrs or other big sections on a resin model that I want to get smooth. I'll come back and hit it with the sandpaper maybe later, but for start, the files are great. And then I did find these itty bitty tiny ones, which are great to get in those underneath places, hard to reach places and little tiny little edges. If I need to really file in there well to get that mold line off of a hard to reach place and the sandpaper is a little bit too flimsy to get to, mini files all the way. Oh, and those files end up getting clogged with plastic and resin material in them. So I recently just picked up this, which is called a file brush, and I can use this to clean them out really quickly so they work much more efficiently once they get clogged with that residue. 
All right, last things here today. Magic Mix and Brush Soap and Conditioner by Yosonia. These are fine art products. Magic Mix um, is kind of a retarder. It makes you have a longer working time with your paint. I like it because it's nice and thick. It doesn't make my paint super thin, but if I add a little bit of water, I can make it thinner. It basically is a great thing that gives me more control. I really enjoy this and I use this as opposed to flow improver or glaze medium, stuff like that all the time. Love it. I have this one product. I don't need to own a hundred. Next is their brush soap and conditioner. I like this because it's nice and fluid and oily. And so this means that it really seeps into the brush bristles, brush bristles, brush bristles, brush bristles. And it makes sure that each one gets conditioned and it almost like rehydrates with that oil attaching and it doesn't leave an oily feel to your brush afterwards. The other nice thing is that it works for any kind of paint. If I'm using my acrylic brushes or my oil brushes or my enamel brushes, they can all be cleaned in this one thing. Again, one product that will help take the place of four or five others. Next is this little guy called a silicoil. Now, there's nothing wrong with using an old coffee mug or whatever you have to rinse your brush out with. I've done that for a long time, but I wanted to test this out and I really like it. It is made for fine artists, but it's great about it is it has this metal ring inside and it's kind of wound like a spring and I can clean my brush off of that and get the paint off without worrying about touching the side of the cup, which often gets film buildup and all of the particles from the paint as the paint gets dirty settle to the bottom away from where this brush coil is. So I don't worry about contaminating my brush a little bit more. It's a small one, but I do like it. All right, and the last one is actually going to be paint. These are what's called heavy body acrylic. Specifically, the color is titanium white. This is the whitest white and it is thick as toothpaste, specifically because most miniature painting whites are very, very gritty or grainy or we can't get a good coat with it. So these things really solve that in a pinch. And if you are trying to build up your colors to a really vibrant highlight or even have those specular highlights of pure white, nothing will look more powerful than these whites. They're not super expensive, they're not cheap either, but again, one tube of this should last you like 20 years. Oh, I almost forgot about makeup sponges. These little wedges that you can get for pennies online or in your local store. They're great for a couple of things. I like to use them to clean up on my enamel or oil paint jobs, but they're also awesome for working with an airbrush. I use this when I wanna make sure I kinda wipe clean my airbrush tip and needle to make sure that I don't poke myself, I don't damage the needle. This thing works great. Again, I have my little bottle of alcohol as well that I'll dab a little bit on the sponge to get a nice quick clean job on the tip of that brush. So that's it. These are my favorite tools to use that aren't necessarily meant for us as miniature painters. And I know there's a lot out there, but I think it's important that we share the knowledge amongst each other where we can help save some money, find the best tool for the job, and overall just understand that there's a lot out there that might be helpful for us. So let me know if you enjoyed this style of video where we're just unscripted, shooting from the hip, saying stupid things and sharing a little bit of random information. Let me know in the comment section below. Also go down there and share any other kind of tools that you know of that I didn't mention today that you use that weren't intended for miniature painters so we can help each other out that way. If you like the channel and you wanna support it, the main way that I can support this channel and keep it going is through my Patreon. You can check out the link below about all the fun rewards I offer and hang out with me in the Discord any day of the week. I will see you all soon. Be good to one another, and we'll catch you later. Oh, look at that, I got a new wallet. This here's a saw, if you ever need a saw for sawing little things. It's a little saw. Never have too many hatchets. Get a tarp, tarps are great, you know, no evidence left behind.